In my last video, I asked a question about the showrunners of Rings of Power. You know, the first time showrunners who had been given three quarters of a billion dollars to put together a show? I looked up the two showrunners for Rings of Power. I would love to know how they got hired because there's nothing in their past that would indicate these are two guys that I'm just gonna send like almost a billion dollars to and see what they create. These guys either have great friends in high places or they are the best bullshit artists that I've ever run into. And I would love to hear the pitch meeting that created this. And just like that, the Hollywood Reporter came out with an article explaining how they got the job as first time showrunners. It's almost like Amazon has a device in your home that listens for questions and answers them. Anyway, the Hollywood Reporter kind of put together a puff piece about why McKay and Payne, which kind of sounds like a buddy cop movie to me, were given the part when they had little to no experience in show running any show, much less a three quarter of a billion dollar project. It turns out that McKay and Payne, you know, the buddy cop guys, they decided to go in there and they spoke Elvish to Simon Token. And that's supposed to be what happened. Or they are the best bullshit artists that I've ever run into. No, they didn't get it that way because the article kind of like hides the part, it, it kind of like mentions it offhand, that J.J. Abrams recommended them and made a phone call. And that's what really got them the part. These guys either have great friends in high places. It's the same thing in Hollywood all the time. It's not what you know, it's who you know. So they were given the part and apparently Part of their pitch was to show a big map of Middle Earth. And when they showed the map of Middle Earth, they, they circled two sections and they, and they said, this part and this part is what everything else has been written about. And, and we have all these different worlds to consider, which is stupid. Imagine if I had a map of the US and I circled Hollywood and I circled New York and I said, this is what most of, of the stories are written about in Hollywood. I'm gonna write about this part. Give me money. Stories aren't about places. Stories are about people. And I feel like once you realize that and you kind of like look at how the movie looks, you go, wow, they have really amazing establishing shots. In fact, The Hollywood Reporter spends a lot of time explaining about how Payne and McKay are walking them around the artwork and showing them the artwork and saying, isn't this pretty? This is great. Look at all these worlds we're creating but they're not talking about the plot and they're not talking about the characters. Go figure. That's why the thing is gorgeous as hell, but has no discernible characters and kind of a plot going on, but not really. So let's start here. They were recommended by J.J. Abrams. That's the first problem. They were recommended by J.J. Abrams. If you know anything about J.J. Abrams, you know that he was the son of a television producer and he went on to produce films, but all of his films kind of had the style of someone else. He went on to do Star Trek, of course, and he kind of copied the style and pieces of it, but everyone made the same observation, which is it's kind of close, but it's not quite there. Same thing with Star Wars. Go figure, he had like all the pieces there, but he couldn't seem to put them together. He's someone that's known for painting by numbers. I wish to God he would get his act together and do something original because then he would realize like all the things that he's been doing wrong up until this point. You can copy all the pieces of what other people do, but you don't necessarily get the finished product, which brings us to rings of power. They're copying all the same characters. They're using all the same places, but they're not actually creating characters and they're not actually using the places in the way that they should be used. They're using the locations as if they were travel guides. And as far as I can tell, that's what McKay and Payne kind of thought of the different locations as. Here's Mordor. Here's the Southlands, which turns into Mordor. Here's these different cool locations, and we're gonna put people in them, and you're gonna watch it because we put people in these cool locations. I kind of get the feeling that McKay and Payne are those guys who travel to Europe constantly and then they come back and say, you'll never guess where I came from. That's right, I was in Europe. Here's a quote from them. 
The entire process of making this show has been a massive learning experience for everyone involved. We had no idea of what we were getting into. No one else did either. Okay, so I fantasized about like handing my script over to a producer and having it made and getting all the control over it. But I've always understood that if I ever get in that position, I'm going to hire someone who's going to stand next to me and tap me on the shoulder politely and tell me when I'm fucking up. The arrogance of these guys is outstanding. They went into this process with literally a bunch of other people that have no idea what they're doing and they expected it to come out right? Let me read another quote from The Hollywood Reporter. Tolkien's world has a long, unfortunate history of attracting fascist-adjacent admirers. Since when? I read Tolkien when I was probably 14 years old. I didn't read it because I loved fascism. I read it because it was about small people, literally hobbits, taking on a much greater power. It's about the little guy taking on the big guy. It's not little guys admiring the fascist. It's not the little guys going, Sauron, that's the side that I want to take on. No, it's about a literal hobbit taking on the worst, most unimaginable evil in the world. And you call that fascist adjacent admirers? Who? The spirit of Tolkien is about disparate people who don't trust one another and look different from one another, finding common ground in friendship and accomplishing big things. No, that's not what it's about. It's about the smallest creature taking on a power much bigger than itself because that's the right thing to do. That's it. The point is, these two guys know nothing about character development, and I don't think they ever thought about it before. They're thinking in terms of, where are we going next? You know where I'm going? I'm leaving your series. I'm not going to pay attention to it anymore. I love Tolkien to death. I think it creates great worlds and amazing characters. But somehow you watched Lord of the Rings, and you didn't understand that it's first and foremost about characters. My name is John. I hope you take a look at my other videos. They have absolutely nothing at all to do with Lord of the Rings. So far.